In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral in Sydney for the Mass of the Solemnity of St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop. It's not often that a feast day of a saint supersedes the Sunday celebration of Christ's resurrection. But saints are, of course, reflections of the triumph of Christ's grace and Australia's first saint is no exception. In these hard times of pandemic, we recall that Mary was herself no stranger to adversity. And we ask for some of her courage and clear-sightedness in our circumstances. This week we celebrated the 800th anniversary of the death of Saint Dominic. All around the world, his feast is celebrated today, on the 8th of August. All around the world, that is, except in Australia, where he's trumped by Mary MacKillop. But being the gentleman he was, I'm sure Dominic was happy to defer to the first ever recognised Australian saint. It's my special privilege to welcome today, as our readers, Mary MacKillop's successor as Congregational Leader, Sister Monica Kavanagh, with Sister Josephine Dubar. To all the sisters at the MacKillop Shrine in North Sydney and elsewhere throughout the land, a very happy feast day to you all. And to everyone watching via live streaming, remember that Australia needs more saints. It needs you to be a saint. So let us repent of our sins where we've failed to be so. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, source of all goodness, who have shown us in St. Mary, a woman of faith living by the power of the cross. Teach us, we pray, by her example to live the gospel in changing times and to respect and defend the human dignity of all in our land. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Up and go to Sarephath, a Sidonian town, and stay there. I have ordered a widow there to give you food. So off he went to Sidon. And when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, please, bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replies, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go ahead and do as you have said. But first, make a little scorn of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some for yourself and your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she, himself, and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Shadow of your wings, I rejoice. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you, now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Jesus said to his disciples, That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. Surely life means more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Can any of you, for all his worrying, add one single cubit to his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his regalia was robed like one of these. Now, if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, you men of little faith? So do not worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are we to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly Father knows you need them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness, 
and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Mary MacKillop was about 20 years old, living in Portland, Victoria, she was accidentally locked in the church overnight. Sounds rather spooky, but Mary counted it as an opportunity to spend all night in vigil with our Lord. It was a turning point in her life. Her great mission of serving God's young and poor, especially through education, began, as all true missions do, in contemplation. We can be distracted by Mary's extraordinary activity and achievements and forget that she was, before all else, a woman of prayer. In fact, her sisters Annie and Lexi teased Mary that she made her home wherever she was into a convent with her endless prayers. Perhaps they thought that she was just malingering, or worse, playing the saint. Little did they know. But it was in prayer that Mary heard God's call to educate young Australians and to do so through her own version of religious life. Our saint's story began 22 years before, when Alex MacKillop, an ex-seminarian, emigrated to Australia and here married another Scots emigre, Flora MacDonald. He was a strong influence on their seven children, especially the eldest, Mary Helen. But Alex never really settled down. He was at sea or on the road most of his life. And he was clueless with money. So his family was poor. Mary reacted against her father's poor administration, but she inherited his gadabout tendencies. And one of the quotes on her tomb is, remember we are but travelers here. Absent her father, Mary went to work at age 16 to support the family as a shop assistant and then a governess. Then came the fateful meeting with Father Julian Tennyson Woods. Together they opened a free Catholic school in Panola and founded the Sisters of St. Joseph of the Sacred Heart in 1866. By 1869, when Mary took her final vows, there were already more than 70 sisters educating children in 21 schools, as well as working with orphans, street kids, the elderly, and dying. So began an extraordinary religious order, or two, and an even more extraordinary network of schools, convents, and charitable institutions 
providing care of various kinds, but above all, exposing all comers, especially the poor, to the love of God and to Mary's system of education based on the four R's of reading, writing, arithmetic and religion. It wasn't an easy road for Mary, who had taken of the cross as her religious surname. She struggled with bishops, the more supportive ones being absent when she needed them, the less supportive ones being all too present and energetic. With friction with Tennyson Woods, other clergy, even some sisters, with sometimes hostile press and ever financial challenges. With the geography of a continent and world, which was her mission field. And with the sudden death of her mother in a shipwreck. But her upbringing in adverse circumstances had made her hardy. Like her iconographical emblem, the eucalyptus. We can picture her in heavy habit, on horseback in the heat and dust, taking on the bush and desert, determined to bring the love of God to those Pope Francis has called at the peripheries. Through all this, she never wavered in her trust in God as she taught her daughters and as her tomb attests. Mary embraced wholeheartedly Christ's advice in our gospel, not to worry about what you are to eat or wear, not because these things don't matter, but because life is so much more than food and the body so much more than clothing. Just think of the wildflowers dressed in glorious habits and know your Heavenly Father cares so much more for you. Mary's exceptional trust in divine providence allowed her to pursue her higher purpose undeflected We too can take comfort today from Christ's assurance that he knows our needs and will look after us if we first set our hearts on his kingdom, all else will fall into place. We are challenged by the present pandemic, as MacKillop was by many things to re-examine our priorities and recalibrate our compass so that it points to God's kingdom. It's not always straightforward, but if we remain on track, we will not be alone. So if we're not to worry about what we eat or wear, does that mean we walk around naked and hungry? Clearly not. Mary chose and provided a common habit for her sisters. She knew that God helps those who help themselves, or that we should pray as if everything depends on God and act as if everything depends on us. To be individuals, who respond reliably to divine providence and the kind of community that cultivates such character, St. Paul offers us a blueprint. Clothe yourselves in the religious habit of compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, forbearing and forgiving each other. In the present lockdown, our homes can become hothouses 
with so many having to work or study in one confined space 24-7 for weeks on end. We need to heed Paul's call today to bear with one another, forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins, put on love, and always be thankful. None of which, you might say, is any monopoly of Christians. It's just common sense, common decency. But as if presciently addressing us on how to live a healthy lockdown as Christians, Paul continues, let Christ's peace reign in your hearts and homes. As if aware of the challenges of learning from home, Paul says, teach and advise each other in all wisdom. And as if aware of our present need to worship from within the domestic church, he also says, let the message of Christ reign in your homes. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and sacred music to God. As Mary MacKillop observed more than once, the readings of the day at Mass often speak very directly to our present circumstances. In this time of pandemic, we might recall another part of the story of Mother Mary of the Cross and her daughters. In 1881, Sister Josephine Carolyn, who had been involved in public contest with Bishop James Quinn of Brisbane over attacks on Mary MacKillop, was removed with the other sisters to the relative safety of Sydney. Having connections in the Bank of Queensland, she was able to secure the credit to purchase Chessant, a large three-storey building in the rocks, next door to the old St Michael's Church, as a third Josephite House of Providence. It accommodated 12 sisters and 36 destitute residents, including 22 street kids or orphans. The very name House of Providence spoke loudly of MacKillop's spirituality. Mary lived there in the 1880s until she moved to North Sydney. While Sister Bonaventure then, the then leader of the New South Wales province lived there, it was also the provincial house. But the third great wave of the Black Death emerged in northern China in 1855. Plagues moved more slowly in those days, but by 1894 it had reached Hong Kong by 1896, India, and by 1899, Numea. The following year, the bubonic plague hit the rocks in Sydney, and health authorities imposed a severe lockdown. The newly formed plague department set about disinfecting houses with lime and carbolic water, knocking down and burning things, and paying tuppence per rat delivered to the Bathurst Street incinerator. The sisters and their clients were forced to leave the rocks, but the government offered some compensation, which allowed the funding of a girls' orphanage at Lane Cove. So the Josephites can testify that good can come even from pandemics. 
Despite the parallel challenges of today, we recognise the heroes who went before us often suffered much worse than we. We're blessed to be able to connect electronically when we are physically distanced. Mary had to engage in endless, exhausting journeys to keep in touch with her sisters and beloved children. If she could do it, we too can surely find ways to reach out to the financially, educationally, or spiritually poor of our time. Together with Mary MacKillop, let us don the religious habit of Christ's love and offer his strength and comfort to all thirsty souls. We profess together the faith that sustained Mary MacKillop through all her trials. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Just as St Mary of the Cross MacKillop trusted deeply in God's presence, even in the darkest of times, we entrust our petitions and needs to Almighty God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Anthony, and all who are appointed by God to lead us in faith, may they strengthen us in our fidelity to Christ and his Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our priests, deacons, especially those in our archdiocese, that the joy of their vocation be renewed within them to sustain them in fidelity and prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Josephite family throughout our country, that their vision for the poor and work for justice may bring many souls to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people, that they may respond generously to the call of the Good Shepherd to serve God's people with the courage and humility of St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, whatever vocation they choose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families and for all those preparing for marriage, 
that they would entrust their lives and household to the teachings of Jesus Christ and be strengthened in their practice of our Catholic faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering with physical, emotional or spiritual struggles, that the risen Christ will console and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may see the face of God and live. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mary MacKillop was a great one for praying to Our Lady and St Joseph. And so we ask today, Our Lady, on this feast for our whole nation, to intercede for our nation and for each of us in our families as we pray. Hail Mary, full of, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, we look upon the life of St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, with gratitude and hope. May her witness and example inspire all Australians to give their lives to the praise and honour of your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As you gather us, O God, at your holy altar on this feast of St. Mary of the Cross, grant, we pray, through her intercession, that what we offer with praise and petition may strengthen us in all charity and faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your temple, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry and Richard, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we receive, Lord God, on this feast of St. Mary, strengthen us to walk the way of the cross and bring us to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I invite Sister Monica to come and wish us all the feast, a happy feast. Well, on behalf of all the Sisters of St. Joseph, uh, I'd like to wish all of you joining in this celebration this morning a very, very happy feast of Mary McKillop and I'd like to thank you Archbishop Anthony for inviting Josephine and I to be here with you today. I, it gave me a sense of being in communion with you the people of God and also with the sisters around the congregation. I know that many of you will probably be disappointed that you will, won't be able to come to Mary's tomb today so I'd like to just encourage you to take a moment somewhere in the day, maybe to light a candle of hope, and just to sit with Mary and let her hold you in love. And perhaps these are some word, words of wisdom she'd like to offer you. Remember, God will carry you through every storm, just as it carried her and the sisters through their storms. Be kind to one another. Be patient, take fresh courage, and remember who it is that you're trying to follow. And I think she'd say to all of us, let's all do our bit, because building community with one another was a very strong thing in her life. And she would be wanting us to do that, because in our unity lies our strength. And I'm also mindful that this year she would be wanting us to acknowledge Joseph in this year of Joseph. And she had a great love for Joseph. And she always said, in every difficulty, go to Joseph and you will not be disappointed. She never forgot his watchful care of herself, of the sisters and the people she served. And I'm sure today she will be asking Joseph to, get, to have his watchful care of each of you. So I'd also encourage you to do something delightful today. Have a treat. Mary loved to celebrate the feast days with the children and with the people she served. And she would always have a little treat for them uh, or a little activity or celebration. So I encourage you to, to find today just something that will give you a, a little lift, uh, maybe bake a cake uh, or go and pick a flower in the garden just to remember Mary and the gift that she's been to our church here in Australia and to our community and to people across the world. So happy feast day. Thank you, Sister Monica, and I know I speak for all of us here at St Mary's Cathedral and all those watching by live streaming in saying we wish you and the sisters a very happy feast day. You, your family gave us a very great gift in giving Australia its first saint. In fact, four recognised saints have visited this cathedral. St Paul VI, St Teresa of Calcutta, St John Paul II, but the first was St Mary MacKillop. And I think it's wonderful we have a little shrine to her and we have with us today a relic of St Mary to remind us of just how close she and all the saints are to us. 
One of the great works of Mary MacKillop was, of course, setting up an extraordinary network of schools. And that was partly in response to the challenge of secularisation in Australia. The fear that education, and therefore the lives of children, would be godless. Well, we have a new challenge in the unremitting crusade of the secularists to silence all religious believers. The latest tactic is to campaign that anyone who doesn't regularly attend church should mark themselves as no religion on Tuesday night census. This is seriously misleading. We know that many people with faith practice only irregularly or who connect to God and the church in ways other than mass attendance. Not only is this campaign deceptive, it also reduces our ability to get reliable information on where our people are. And so where we must concentrate our infrastructure and services as a Catholic church, including the great schools, Mary MacKillop, the hospitals and aged care, welfare, pastoral care, and the rest. By giving a distorted picture of who and where we are, the secularists hope to use the census as another excuse for denying believers a voice in the public square. So I ask you, please, to ask your family and your friends to mark your true religion on the census. And on behalf of all of us here at St Mary's Cathedral, a very happy feast day of St Mary MacKilla to you all. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Through the example of St Mary of the Cross, may you learn to recognise God's will for you and trust in his providence. Amen. Amen. May her life of service awaken in you a deep respect for the poor and a strong will for justice. Amen. Amen. May you share in her courage, see with the eyes of Christian love, and learn from her holy deeds. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.